So let's see what else can we talk about, um, or at least uh, do you have another question mark or some something? No, I, I guess um, I haven't looked at the roadmap lately to see if it's been being updated or anything like that. Has it been? Um, I recently updated it regarding uh, the documentation. Um, um, mainly logging for myself what has to be done uh, in order to start the uh, the handbook for 2.0. Mm. Um, so let me let me go back to that page where it actually was. Um, so just one thing uh, that may interest you uh, that I uploaded or posted uh, one week ago. It was about uh, opening 1.x course in 2.0, uh, what people are, are expecting or may expect. Um, and the fact is, is since it was major refactoring, uh, the, the type of rendering or layouting of the score has been changed, has been improved uh, to uh, make it overall better readable. But, uh, of course, uh, since the, uh, the rendering is different and you would open a, a 1.2 file uh, into the, uh, into the, uh, the latest rank, then, um, or in 2.0, in the future 2.0, then obviously it could uh, look different. Um, and I'm not sure whether you saw that handbook page. So I've shared it on the I, chat here. Or let me, let me yeah, put it. Yeah, I did just see that because you put it on the chat a little bit ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's one of the pages, new pages that will come into the handbook, uh, upgrading uh, from MuseScore uh, One X. Uh, now let me go back to the roadmap for 2.0 and see what I've put in there for the documentation. That was still an issue for myself. Um, or that we improved on. Um, so for for 2.0, uh, there is a very important change. Um, currently, the handbooks are distributed uh, as PDF files uh, in the 2.0 package, and there are a couple of problems with that. Uh, first of all, the size, uh, the, the handbooks in PDF, especially for the CGK uh, languages like J Japanese is one, they embedded the font, and therefore those PDFs are very large. And so it's like 10 megabytes uh, out of the 30 megabytes in total is now PDFs uh, in the uh, in the Musco distribution. So we figured if we can get uh, this size down, that would be better. Um, and one of the decisions was to move away from PDF and go towards uh, HTML-based um, documentation that is uh, put inside MuseScore. Uh, so how do we envision that that uh, will be shown to, to our users? It's uh, in a side panel or something within MuseScore. Uh, they will be able to uh, so see the documentation. They will be able to search through it as it's HTML. Um, uh, we just rely on the normal browser within 2.0 uh, in order to, um, to give feature like uh, search. Um, the terms and con uh, the terms and conditions the terms of uh, contents uh, the table of contents sorry the table of contents will be um, normally uh, generated from the HTML file and then um, uh, server based I guess or we could do JavaScript based as well but but I guess it's better to to process the HTML a bit uh, coming from the site and then inject a table of contents that is also then available uh, within MuseScore. Uh, and also perhaps an index. So we started a glossary page, uh, and that glossary page is being worked on a bit, uh, but it's not really great. So what I env envision for the uh, the next handbook that we might start writing is, as uh, as people are writing and they um, they uh, find a word that is a, a special word um, that is a word to be mentioned in in a glossary then they should use some special markup. This can be just like uh, in HTML, it can be uh, a span and then with a certain class name. And uh, we could uh, use again the same uh, processing technique in order to go over all the words that are being marked uh, with this special markup and then make glossary out of it. Yeah. Uh, that would mean that uh, if you click on a certain word in the glossary, it could uh, trigger a search. Uh, this search then tells you, okay, this word is there and there and there available. Um, 
So uh, where are we right now <laughs> with this work? Well, uh, it started a bit uh, in the sense that uh, I'm preparing it on the site. So it starts uh, again from the site. So what we will do is we make a new book, uh, which means uh, we start from scratch. We can copy over the existing documentation, uh, put it into a new page, and then uh, rework it. Uh, but the new book will have a new outline and we will keep the current book, the 1.x book, into existence and we, we keep it frozen or we don't work on it anymore. So we start working on 2.0 and then uh, we need to do the, the processing stuff for the table of contents and for the glossary and the export for the HTML which then will be, be embedded into MuseCore. Now, uh, where are we with the embedding into MuseCore? Uh, well, we already added a web browser into MuseCore for MuseCore Connect. Um, so that kind of stuff is already in there. Um, I think um, Werner needs two days in order to make this happen. Yeah. Uh, so embedding embedding the, um, uh, the, doc, the, the, the the HTML and that's it. Right. Um, so that was a long uh, monologue. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. And I would envision that based on where things seem to be and what my own schedule is, that in the month of December uh, would probably be a good time for me to be able to, to help with some of the, the actual writing of some of the documentation. Okay. Okay. Well, by that time, uh, we'll have for sure the, the alphas out and perhaps even a beta, who knows. So it, it will be the, the right time to just um, yeah, kick off that uh, documentation uh, initiative as well. One more thing regarding this, uh, we, we will be able normally to also provide uh, PDFs because on the website, I know a lot of people are, are happy with the PDF, so we should be able to generate a PDF from the HTML file and post it on the, on the website. Yeah. Sounds good. So one, one thing that's uh, arising out of documentation is, is the UI stable enough to start doing video tutorials on 2.0? Uh, no, not at all. Um, so it's, it's good that you mentioned something about design because uh, we have two major initiatives going on uh, in order to um, improve the design uh, of MuseCore. Uh, that is not only MuseCore but also MuseCore.org. Uh, but to start with MuseCore, uh, there is a, a Czechish uh, student uh, who joined um, yeah, the community. Uh, his name is, or his nickname at least, is Tin Man. Uh, maybe you have seen it, seen him around already on the forum. Um, and he's um, he's uh, he's pretty driven uh, to make a new design for MuseCore. Now you may have seen his work already in the handbook, in the developer handbook. Let me just dig it up for you. Uh, Developer design, developer handbook, and design, design, there it is. So, let me share it through. Here's the chat, but also design. Voila. So, he wrote a, a couple of pages, and okay on the design initiative, uh, how you can contribute. Um, so we have a separate mailing list, which isn't used at this moment, because uh, there is no critical mass actually, there's just this guy working on it right now, but as soon as more people are joining in, maybe this uh, dedicated mailing list may, may make sense. Um, how to design, so he's trying to define some kind of a, yeah, a branding or how style uh, for MuseCore. Um, Currently, uh, this isn't advanced yet, meaning he's just making up his mind at this moment, uh, see what he can, or what, what MuseCore is supposed to be, and then he will just um, try to come up with the, with the how style, I assume. And then, uh, let me take some things out of it. Okay, for instance, the icon set. Um, he, or he thought, or he asked, um, what could be the easiest way to improve the design of MuseCore? And obviously the icons, uh, those could be 
improved and if, if those are improved then the look and feel of MuseCore might already be drastically improved. Um, so we told them the icons and uh, let me see if I can share a screenshot of uh, the type of IDs he had for the icons. Uh, I got a screenshot from him. I already shared them with you, Mark, right? I You've seen think them. so, yes. I think, I, I, I think I'm get picturing what you're talking about. Yeah, so, okay, here it comes. Uh, okay, you see the um, the screenshot, Michael? Um, no. What should no? I click on? So in the Google Doc, uh, the last the last link. Um, I see that window. But maybe maybe I should do something different. So let me do a screen share here. That could be easier. Then anyone can follow along. Okay, so now you should see it instead of my face. You will see the screenshot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's uh, the the thing he's working on. Um, so um, at this moment, you've seen that uh, Musical Two Dodo is using a dark design, and uh, yeah, mainly the, the reason why it's a dark design is that uh, Render uh, decided at a certain point to switch it on and see see what happens uh, with this dark design, how it works out, and so Tin Man uh, he uh, he further worked on it, and uh, as you can see, he made a yeah a new set of icons that are yeah uh, yeah it's more more like a how did they call it? Uh, a monochrome, monochrome icon set. So two colors, a little bit of gray, uh, grayscale in there. And <laughs> yeah, no problem. The um, the um, the top part is where you have you. the icons. Um, yeah, to work with you on your score. And the bottom part is where you have the the control, like playback and concert pitch and so forth. Um, this is just uh, that was the first mock-up that he made, and he made this uh, two months ago, I think. Um, it's just to give you a, f a sense of uh, an, an idea on on what he could he could do with MuseScore. Uh, this is by far not uh, what eventually will be will be done, but it's just to show you what uh, what Tin Man is uh, is up to. And uh, so, what do you think if you see this? I. It's the, um, the the icons that are being used at the moment, isn't it? I think they're very good. Um, my only reservation is that they only show up on a black background at the moment. That's true. Um, so uh, we haven't made a decision yet on... Um, uh, well, actually, we've put the decision in his hands, whether he wants to design something for a dark team or whether he wants to design something for a, a light team. Uh, the only restriction we've uh, put in place at, is that we will design for just one team only and one team across all platforms and basically that's because we don't have the resources in order to make several teams and maintain several teams so we should uh, we should focus on making one and one very good uh, normally I think his uh, preferences are to make a light team not a dark team uh, his feeling about it is that uh, a dark team could seem a bit depressing uh, and also a dark team is often used for um, photo software yeah. uh, and it makes sense for photo software as photos are very yeah, colorful and so forth you want the stuff around you want the software around to be in the background and you want the photo to uh, come come to the front whereas for uh, for notation where uh, yeah it's already black and white meaning <laughs> Uh, in this case, you see the sheet music; it's black and white. Uh, you might want to have more colors, then, for instance, in your or yeah, your team around it might be more colorful. Um, so I think he he will design for for the light team, but uh, I'll I'll leave the final decision over to him. Because uh, I did play around with um, changing the color. Mm -hmm. uh, it's possible to get a color which shows up equally well on whether you prefer the dark theme or the light theme. Um, you know, if you choose a, a blue or a green, uh, or even a red, um, it shows up equally well. Yeah. 
so currently I'm, I must say it's a bit broken I think because if you if you try the light team or something then uh, it will be very I it will it won't be any good right now um, it's gone huh? uh, it's gone even okay all right um, but so I, I guess uh, in a couple of weeks uh, we'll we'll get some movement on this, and uh, you might see changes in the in 2.0 in the nightly builds. Uh, so the the way that will happen is basically we'll we'll do it very simple. Um, he he proposes either just an icon set or either some changes in in the uh, in the design, meaning uh, new colors. Um, and those new colors are directly programmed uh, in the software. So initially we had uh, a solution with uh, CSS files, but that solution wasn't working well. It was like, yeah, uh, for spots, uh, several spots in the software, uh, that CSS file was not loaded, and, and so it didn't work. So we decided to discard it and to work directly into the software. Um, so that means that uh, all the stuff will be will be coded uh, into uh, musical to Dodo, uh, except for of course the graphics, which will be delivered uh, as either SVG files or either PNG files. Um, and we will we'll just do this, uh, yeah, on the, on the, on the yeah ongoing thing, meaning uh, rapid uh, back and forth. So I guess it's either Wender or Nicola who will uh, input the the new the new colors uh, as soon as. Uh, a designer could be ten men, but could be could be anyone else who wants to uh, to join. Uh, says like, I want to have this color in place. Uh, give it to me so we can test this uh, and see how it works out. Yeah. All looks good to me. Yeah, sounds good to me too. Um, it, as I, I've got plans for some more video tutorials, that's all. It'd be be nice, but I'm holding off because of the imminence of two point naught. Yes, uh, but it'd be, it'd be nice to have something in place for when it when it's launched. Yeah, yeah. I'd I'd also like to then hear more about the 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 musecore.org site redesign in particular. Um, here here's my main reason for caring. Uh, as you know, I did that uh, series of uh, the the tour thing. School's starting up for me in a couple weeks, and for a lot of other people right now. And I would very much like to be able to point people to those pages um, as a getting started guide for the, the, the many people who will be seeing MuseCore for the first time this month. Um, so it's kind of sort of usable with the pages as they are in the old theme, except the, the stuff that's supposed to be pushed off to the right isn't. Um, I could certainly just use the version of the pages I have on my own site where I have my own CSS file or something. But I guess I, I would wonder how soon we could get to a point where that tour would be usable while those screenshots are still any good. Uh, because obviously when 2.0 come, comes out, I'm going to have to redo that anyhow. Yes. OK. So let me share then uh, my screen again. Uh, let's see. Uh, there it is. So now you will see uh, yet another mock-up um, of what might become the Oh, it's too wide, apparently. Let's see if I can. OK, that's better, I think. Yeah. So you can see it? Yep. Yes? Yes. OK. Um, so um, so first of all, uh, we went over the, the whole menu structure. Uh, and I think we, we've settled now on how the menu structure should look like. Um, and so this is the, the mock-up that he came up with, and he is again a Tin Man, so the Czechish uh, student. Um, so at the top we have <laughs> the menu, and it will normally be sliding out, so if, if you click on a certain item, uh, other items will pop up. Um, plugins, what you see here is, uh, is already changed into extensions. Yeah. And extensions will contain, of course, plugins. But for 2.0, we uh, envision more extensions like Sandfonts, which is also an extension. And currently, people lack the know-how of how to install a Sandfont because uh, they think uh, often they, they uh, perceive the sound uh, from MuseCore as being bad. So we have to explain them. Here is how you can make uh, MuseCore better. Uh, you have plugins. You have Sandfonts. But also further, you have what we call profiles, and profiles are personalized palettes. So for instance, if if there is uh, someone who's uh, making uh, sheet music for handbells, 
uh, he might make a, a custom palette with some um, custom symb uh, specific symbols for handbells. And he can uh, st um, save this, uh, this palette as a profile. And he could put this profile on musical.org. Uh, and we consider this an as an extension, because everyone will then be able to download this, this profile, install it, and then have those specific symbols for handbells as well. Yeah. Um, that's one of the extensions. And then we had well, more. Templates. Yeah, come templates again. And files. Yes, templates, yeah. uh, indeed. And uh, templates. I'm missing one. Uh, yeah, I think styles. Eh? Yeah, yeah, you said it. Yes, styles, uh, indeed. Uh, so those were the extensions then. So on the home page, what do you see? Well, you see the, uh, the slogan there, um, the screenshots. Uh, it could be multiple screenshots if you want some kind of a slideshow. Then the download button. Uh, and then. Um, Underneath the screenshot, you will see um, the feature sets uh, or the use cases. I don't know what the right name would be, but uh, right now it's called uh, UC General by piano, guitar, choir, lead sheets, and orchestra. Mm. Uh, so we, it's it's a bit what we discussed already, Mark. Um, yeah. Uh, is it is it use cases or what what do we call them? Landing pages, I think is you you was the word yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I call them indeed landing pages because I, I figured, okay, we could have a page for each one of them, but then Tin Man said it's probably better to have them uh, on, on even on the front page because uh, if people see, oh, this is MuseScore, you can make sheet music with it, and then specifically for piano, they click on piano and they see then the features that MuseScore is offering for uh, people who want to make piano sheet music. Um, uh, obviously, that will just show off the, um, the, the yeah the, the large feature sets. Uh, we might want to add some more specific pages then who have more elaborate information. But uh, for start, this is okay. And then at the bottom, we have um, some more uh, general screenshots. I think of the. I love how that voices makes the front page there. Yes, indeed, it's uh, it's a commonly it's too too much asked on the forum, so <laughs> we have to put uh, more emphasis on it. Uh, he's he's uh, himself uh, he's been um, yeah I think a user of notation software. Um, he doesn't consider himself a composer, but so he's he's quite aware on uh, on how it should be used. But he's not a power user, so uh, if if uh, something has to be changed, then uh, I think. Uh, uh, any advice is very welcome. Uh, he will be uh, very uh, accepting it. And at the bottom, uh, just some uh, some call to actions: uh, learn, share, donate, uh, contribute. Um, and over here we have uh, some news. Uh, uh, so this is like the what has to be put on the front page. So uh, everything seems to be there. Um, and I will start uh, working on this normally, um, yeah, as of, uh, yeah, when my other stuff is done. <laughs> so, uh, normally the beginning of uh, September, um, it might take um, yeah, a, a good month uh, to come to a decent
He's there. All right. Am I back? Welcome back. <laughs> yes. Hello. <laughs> so Thanks, we, were, uh, we were saying uh, that's all fine, but uh, it's back to school season soon. Uh, now. Now. And, uh, and a lot of people. A lot of people will end up on musical.org, and it will be cool if they could have access to the Getting Started page like it is right now and not in a month. OK. All right. So what, what can we do right now? Let's add, see. Add, add the right the, the right align thing and expose the tour on the main page. OK. It's good somewhere. that you're... Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's... Uh, let's... Th this is indeed not, not a large job. So yeah. uh, let me put this... Uh, in the notes as an action for myself. It doesn't even have to be the main page, but whatever. Expose it somewhere and, and, yep. ha and let it display a little nicer than it does. Yeah, okay. another link to, to it. Uh. Yeah. So what was it again? The uh, the right alignment uh, yeah, in the right CSS. Yeah, right alignment. Huh? I forget what it was, but you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll look it up in the uh, in the CSS, so it'll yeah. be easy to see it. Okay. Uh, I got a left align and a right align, but whatever. Yeah. Should it, be it okay by the CSS that I used. Should be okay for tomorrow then. Oh, great. Yeah, there's no time to waste on this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, school started for me yesterday, so. Okay. <laughs> one, of the schools, one of the schools where I teach, but the, the one where I'm more concerned starts in two weeks. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I think I, I said it all um, regarding musical.org. Yeah. The new one. So, of course, we envision that uh, as soon as we are ready with perhaps the beta uh, of 2.0, that we can uh, launch this new site as well. Uh, so, that's sort of the timing we have in mind. So, I have a kind of off the wall question. Um, so a couple of people have uh, like asked me, uh, just sort of out of the blue, well, we heard uh, Sibelius is going away. Is uh, MuseCore have any plans on doing anything in response? Yeah, I don't sure. know what they meant by that, we, but we we make we make a, a lower price for music. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Like I saw, I saw Finale made a made a, a sale. The, you can yeah. switch from Sibelius to Finale. Well, yeah. we make the same, but uh, the price is even better. You can switch to music for free. Right. <laughs> I, I just um, there will be a large number of people migrating from Sibelius to MuseScore probably in the near future as a result of this, depending on how it all shakes out. And it, could, it just could be interesting to see what actually, uh, you know, how that plays out. Do, do you have any idea, any, any more idea about no. what we could do? Um, no. Uh, I, I mean, I in, in my response to the one guy who asked me about it, um, I sort of was explaining that really a lot of the things that someone coming from Sibelius will notice as, oh, it doesn't have this, it doesn't have this that I'm used to, most of that stuff is coming with 2.0 anyhow. So as far as things that newcomers are going to miss, we're, it, it's pretty well already being, being dealt with. Um, but it's also interesting to consider whether uh, there are people who formerly worked for Sibelius who might be interested in contributing to MuseScore in some way. That, that's not the first, the, the first time uh, I hear that. Um, and for me, it's, it's quite... I, I heard two things. I heard some people who were asking uh, Sibelius to go open source. Yeah. For me, it's 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 a great hope, but it will not it will not happen. No, you not you don't make a, a software open source like like this in a, in one day. That's one, and the other one is of course we will uh, welcome uh, every new uh, developer, and I'm I'm doing that. And if someone come to me and say, hey, I'm a former Sibelius developer and I want to help, sure, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, 
remember, uh, this is an open source project, and it's not a six hundred dollars, uh, um, yeah, mm -hmm. software. So we don't have any money for you. Right. So, but yeah, sure. Uh, if a Sibelius developer want to help, want to help for sure. But I really think that Sibelius developers currently they are looking for something else than an open source project to help. Yeah, I'm sure you're right. And it's a pity, but it's it's, uh, it's the case, I think. There might be some kind of civilian power user type people who have some programming experience who might, you know, pe pe people like me, if I was a civilian user, I would be, uh, you know, looking, I would be making the switch now and, mm -hmm. and looking for ways to contribute. Probably not if you were a, a, a power user, maybe not you, but the power users currently of Sibelius, what they are doing is they are fighting against Avid to uh, to make it uh, live, and they set up uh, petitions and, and so on. Right. And they are not looking into open source stuff True. Uh, right now. So, yeah, if it happens, I, I don't see what we can do as the musical developers to to help this happen. Yeah, except, me neither. except what we do, we always do. Meaning, I'm on IST all day long and welcoming new people and and yeah, uh, switching to Git and to GitHub, and that was a huge success, meaning we have a lot more contributors now, people who write codes and make bug fixing, uh, like maybe five or six or more, maybe people who submitted a pull request on GitHub, yeah. and so that's that's really great, and yeah, Sibelius developer or power user or whatever, I don't care, if we can get more, uh, I take it. <laughs> <laughs> because we, we really can use more people on, on MuseCore, for sure. Yeah. But, I, but I'm not sure what we can do more. I mean, I, I can go to a civil use forum and say, hey, I'm one of the developers of MuseCore, and probably I will be shoot <laughs> if I do that, but I could do it. Huh? Yeah, no, no, there's, not, there's, nothing to, there's nothing to do. I was just curious if you had been... Hearing anything or or, or any if anything was happening? No, the no. number of downloads is the same thing as always. Um, yeah. I think, and and yeah, people are are, are outraged to yeah to the, to hear that news, um, and that's kind of normal because they have a huge catalog uh, which they spent hours and hours on. I days and years even uh, to make it so so I guess it's a bit normal that they are outraged to hear that their software package is not going to be uh, developed anymore and and still it's a bit tough to say but um, um, that company will 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 still I have it will still work on it for sure um, but um, yeah yeah okay it's a I think it's a fact of, uh, of 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 just any company that they have to remain profitable. If not, they just go down. And and uh, if if times are bad, like these times are bad for for a lot of companies, then uh, heavy measurements have to be taken. And and unfortunately, that's one of one of those things. Uh, if they don't do this, well, it might be just out of business in a, in a year or something. So it's either this or either doing yeah what they are doing right now. But we get a, a couple of nice uh, uh, blog posts about yeah. about this and about yeah. why uh, you have to choose uh, free software and and not proprietary software and and why it's better. So that's pretty good. And we were in invited to a couple of podcasts to talk about MuseCore because uh, Sibelius was closing uh, an office or because Finale was for sale. Mm -hmm. Because well, not for sale, but. Someone want to buy a finale? Right. You, you, you might have heard. And yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, these times couldn't have been better for us in terms of promotion because people are talking about notation software, which is uh, often considered as a boring, boring industry, yeah. is now very lively again. <laughs> so yeah, uh, couldn't have been a better summer, I think. And, of, uh, and so, without without being jerks, uh, it's it's very hard to find a way to to market ourselves against right. uh, Sibelius, in, in particular in 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 time where people are laid off and so on. So laid out, laid off. I don't know. Uh, people are lose their job. Right. So if you 
if, if we can find a way to, to make it nice, but I, I don't think so. So we didn't make any any yeah any communication about it because it's yeah no I understand it'll 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 reflect badly on MuseScore if you try to capitalize yeah. on it. Yeah. No, we, yeah. But having things yeah. like that, that getting started tour kind of thing will be useful because if people want to get a quick view of, well, what is this open source thing? Can it do everything that I used to be able to do? You know, it's, uh, it, it'll be good for people to be, have a way of seeing that pretty quickly. Uh -huh. yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not writing yet. No, no, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's good. Do, and that is one of them. So. <laughs> it fell through my, my to do list. Uh, that that so fell through mine, too. <laughs> so uh, in the meantime, uh, as you may know, uh, so MuseCore to the Low is a big topic, but we are still maintaining uh, MuseCore.com, and we are also working on mobile offers. I was so it's pass out. so yeah, and it's only twenty four hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you go more north, Nicola, right now, I think you have longer, more light during the day okay. normally. <laughs> yeah. So we yeah. could we could work more there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is are any new developments on the tablet front that are you know getting close enough to be worth talking about, or just still plugging away on the player? Um, still plugging away on the player. So um, um, it it comes together uh, with the, with musical to the do in in a certain way. So the the big structural work that Wanda has been working on, it's it's been a huge uh, or a long time, and uh, and that's been holding back a bit uh, the mobile development as well. Um, uh, but uh, the, the summer uh, things started to look better again. Uh, uh, one of the things we've, we've checked in the meantime is how to make it work for iOS, how to make it work for Android, and maybe other platforms as well. Because mm -hmm. we, uh, to, to just uh, give you an anecdote, we, we met people from Nokia, uh, and uh, they uh, sent us a, a Migo device, uh, and, and Nokia N90. And um, it took like uh, two days of work, I think, for Vanish to, uh, to compile... Uh, the, the core part of MuseCore on there, which, which is called Lip MuseCore, or just the, the part that renders sheet music. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a, a, a good testimonial that uh, what we have now, this, this core library, is, is, uh, is, prob is pretty robust and um, yeah, will work uh, probably on, a, on, on any device where we can compile C code on. Right. Um, having said that, uh, making a, a workable uh, app. Uh, it, it seems with all the the apps that we're seeing right now in the App Store that it that it it doesn't take any effort to make an app or, or something like that, but it's uh, it's far from the truth. Um, so um, so at this moment we don't have any more news, um, but uh, yeah, hopefully in a couple of months uh, something like that. Okay. Uh, yeah. and again it will be just. Just a just player, an editor. <laughs> Ooh, that's uh, another ball game. Although you know, I, I've mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again. I have an idea of making a very lightweight editor that would just create a simple file, you know, with very you know very little complex, you know, not let you do everything you can do in MuseScore, but let you enter some music. And then I could save the result as uh, either Music XML or MFCX or something, and hope there would be a way to send it to the player app to actually then render it and do fun things with it. Um, that's still a model that I would love to see work. The idea of a of a separate uh, editor app that really is just a, a text based editor kind of a thing or a simple a very simple graphical and or text based editor that then relied on the player to do all the, the rendering and everything. So th there is already something, uh, I know you are a big fan, so there is already something for ADC, eh? Um, yeah, uh, something uh, tablet related you mean? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, what is it? I, I'm not familiar with it actually. Uh, I, don't, I don't have the, the name right now, but 
uh, I can I can check. But yeah, it's uh, you can type ABC and see the result and play it. Cool. I guess what I would like is to be able to type, say, if I typed ABC, which I, I think what I would want would be something higher level than that, but still something where I would type ABC, but then have it export as music XML or something so it could be loaded into the player. If the player could load a music XML file, I don't know if that's something that is being considered or not. Not yet. Yeah, okay. But, uh, yeah, C could be. I, I'm assuming it would be just as easy to export uh, an MSCX file as it would a music XML file because they're pretty similar. Mm -hmm. uh, Tunebook? Tune oh, yeah, I have heard of that. No, you mentioned it. Okay. Yeah. And I think you can, you can modify, but I'm not sure. Michael, do you have a tablet or a smartphone? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm talking to you on a tablet. Oh, okay. Windows, right? Yeah, Windows 7 tablet. Yeah. So that's, what, what is that, Windows 7 then? Yeah, yeah. Um, Mark? Yes. Ah. Yeah. So ABC on the left and uh, music on the right. Cool. And, and you can edit. Wow. And yeah. Yeah, I, I've got their website up here now, so I'm. And it's I it's, will be it's free software. It. It's open source. Cool. So yeah, it could probably have a music XML output and yeah. Interesting. But for me, this is this is. A lot of people just don't want to, to deal with ABC. Oh, no, 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 I'm sure most people don't want to deal with ABC. So for me, the, the challenge of making an editor, even a small one, even one staff, even 4.4, four, is how do you enter the notes? And on a tablet, oh, I want to enter the notes, I want to draw them. Yeah. And so you need to do some recognition or something like that to, to have something that is appealing. Yeah. Or you have to have a special UI and something like this. Yeah, I'm imagining, I mean, really, when you get down to it, use scores, keyboard, you know, input via keyboard is, might as well be ABC. It's not, but it might as well be. You, you type a letter name and a duration, you alternate between letter names and durations, you hit a key for rest. It, it's, it's a text-based input system as it is. Um, and so all you really need is some icons so that you're, you know, oh, I didn't type an A, I pressed that button, or, or you know, but it, it could still look fairly decent. It wouldn't be anything majorly fancy, but I think something surprisingly useful could be done that way, and I'm, I'm going to look into it. Okay. In any case, um, the core of MuleScore could be used to, to do this, to display the score, and yeah. to export it to uh, MSCZ. <clears throat> Great. So if you have a UI ID, and if I have time, <laughs> we could, we could yeah. go. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I, it's not high on my priority list, but at some point, it's something I will probably be looking at. Okay. Mm. Something else? Well, I'm teaching you an hour, so I'm going to I'm going to disappear. Okay. Okay. And well, I have a was, faculty uh, meeting coming up fairly soon too, so. Okay. All so right. Probably a good exit point. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap it up then. Um, yep. Shall we do this again? Yeah. yeah. Sounds a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Next time, then uh, we'll have new stuff to show. We can uh, have six more people. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Google Hangout can uh, host up to six more people. But uh, and I, I didn't really uh, promote it, but we are actually live right now on YouTube. So so there is a, a YouTube link uh, that I could send around, and then everyone could see us. But uh, I'll do this for the for the next time, even though it was already very interesting. <laughs> <laughs>
but the problem was I, I didn't figure out until 45 minutes ago that I, I should click on the start broadcast link there uh, at the top. Uh, so so I missed that. So, But uh, everything is recorded and normally will be posted on YouTube. Uh, so um, I'll be checking uh, how that looks and, uh, and then for the next time uh, we'll do... Uh, a shout out uh, to everyone via Twitter and Facebook that they can follow the broadcast. Right. Voila. Um, yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's see then for the next time when uh, when we do this again. Maybe the right the same time. Uh, I, I guess in, in two weeks or something would be good. Uh, yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, thank you. Great hanging out. Yeah. The same. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.